Today I'm going to be talking about Civilizations, a light civilization building game designed by Jan Zalewski. At the heart of Civilizations, the thing that sets it apart from other games is its action selection mechanic. Every player has an identical hand of eight action cards. There's logging, gain wood, quarrying, gain stone, hunting, gain food, cunning, gain a resource of your choice, slacking, gain happiness points, trading, trade one type of resource for another, thieving, steal resources from another player, and doubling. Do your other action twice. The success of the two actions you select depends on how many other players have chosen that action. I'm calling it the hipster mechanic. I repair a lot of independent vehicles you probably wouldn't have heard of. Now, if exactly two players choose quarrying, they get the maximum benefit, three stone each. I feel like we're the only two people that really get quarrying, you know? Yeah, I was into this stone when it was still underground. But if three or more players choose quarrying, it becomes uncool and those players only get one stone each. Guys, can I come quarrying with you? My mum made a packed lunch for everyone. Uh, what are you, a river? Cause that is so mainstream. Quarrying is lame. We're into post rock now. Oh, don't let them see you cry, Derek. And if only one person chooses quarrying, that person gets two stone. It wasn't oversubscribed, but they didn't have anyone helping them either. Guys? Guys, I thought we said meet at the quarry at two o'clock. Aside from making for an enjoyable game, I really enjoy the thematic flavour of the hipster mechanic. I could, like, convert your car to run on coconut oil. It fits with the civilization theme. If you work together with your neighbouring civilizations, you get a greater benefit than working alone. I found this! No way, we could provide longboards for ten people. But if everyone turns up to the woods to chop down trees at the same time, then there's not going to be enough wood to go round. I found... This, we could provide fire for 10 minutes. Four of the action cards give you nothing when three or more players choose it. So if you decide to try and go slacking for a round and snag a few happiness points, otherwise known as victory points, and two other people have the same great idea, well then you all get nothing. If we're all here slacking off, who's advancing the prosperity of our people? I thought you were doing it. And if too many players opt for a life of thievery, then there's no good people left to steal from. Give me all your money. I just wanted to be part of something. Ah. Don't cry, Derek. Don't let them see you cry. And the same goes for doubling. Usually this card would double the effect of the other action card that you play. But if three or more players choose doubling, well then it's useless. The riskiest move in the game is to try double slacking. If it pays off, you get four happiness points. But if three or more players choose slacking, then you've wasted a whole round. Why does being lazy never get me anywhere? Everyone selects the two action cards they want in turn order. But this is where it gets interesting. You play one card face down and one card face up. So you never know how many other people are playing the action card that you want to play. What you can do is play your face up card as a warning to others so that they don't pick the same action as you. I'm doing hunting, okay? So only one other person do hunting, yeah? This phase is really interesting because you're trying to guess the actions that other players are picking. You might want to go hunting this round, but you know that if three or more people go hunting, you'll only get one food and it'll be a waste of the card. So maybe you wait until next round. And that's the other thing to consider. There are nine rounds to the game, but they're split up into three different ages. Once you've played a card in that age, you don't get to play it again until the start of the next age. It doesn't come back into your hand until then. So if you've been hunting in the first turn and all you got was one food, well, that's all you've got until the start of the next age. And that's where the thieving and cunning cards come in handy. Once everyone's picked their cards, the face down ones are revealed and everyone claims their rewards. And it's there where you find out how well you've done. There are some who get their perfect partner. Here's to slacking buddies. To slacking buddies. Those who are flying solo. Mum, can you come and pick me up? My friends didn't turn up again. And the ones that learn that three's a crowd. Ah, oh, for God's sake. The next phase of the game is where you use your resources to buy ideas cards to improve your civilization. In the first two ages, you're buying cards that are going to make you stronger in future rounds. My civilization has invented vacations, so whenever I take slacking as an action, I get an extra happiness point. And this is where the theme of civilizations really comes out. You buy a pickaxe, 
and it makes perfect sense what it does. Now when I go quarrying, I get an extra stone. There's categories of cards too, indicated by icons in the corner. For example, if you have the hammer, then it costs one less resource to build any building cards. And in the third age, if you pick up the tourism card, and you're the person with the most buildings in the game, then you get two extra happiness points. And my favourite card, Canine Domestication. If you do an action on a turn with another player, you can spend a wood and get a free happiness point. Or in other words, you're taking the dog for a walk with a friend and you're throwing him a stick. Go fetch, boy! It's not a real dog. It's these great bits of thematic humour that make the game that bit more entertaining and remind me of Civilization's older brother, CV. Check out my top 10 couples games for more information about that game. Civilizations is a really fun game. When we were playing, we had players high-fiving each other because they picked the same action as someone else, or getting annoyed at each other because someone had ruined their chance for slacking. It's a really simple, elegant mechanic that makes for a neat game. It's a light game, it's super easy to learn, I could definitely imagine families playing this, and I could also see using it as a gateway game to introduce non-players to the hobby. Does it feel like building a civilization? Not especially, but the cards do help to bring out the theme. I like that this game is kind of about the basics of a civilization. Mine is a nation of highways, hammers, and hedonism. Civilizations was a shorter game than I was expecting, which is something I've never said about a game before. And I think with all the deck builders and worker placement games out there, it's exciting to see a game offering something completely new in its hipster mechanic. Wait a minute, you're the one playing a prototype copy of a game that isn't even out yet? Who's the hipster now? If you like this video, please like this video. If you want to see more videos like this, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to catch me on Twitter, it's at ActualLol. I'm John Perkis on BoardGameGeek, I've put the links in the description. I'm John Perkis, thanks for watching.